All right, everybody, welcome to Lie with Prima. Adrian here. I'm going to be doing a layout with you tonight, and it's going to be featuring Timeless Memories Collection by Prima. It is very vintagey. I'm sorry, I'm trying to adjust myself on my chair. Um, it's very vintagey. There's going to be a bright, lots of bright colors in my layout um, to kind of juxtapose um, these much needed vintage style that we have through with this collection so right now let me real quick go over some announcements uh, again you'll have to forgive me in case I cough or my voice is not completely 100% I had the flu and bronchitis last week so I'm just getting over it and just hopefully I won't be coughing all right so I did get some announcements from Carrie um, next show coming up Delena did announce on Tuesday that there would not be a Live with Prima coming this Tuesday, but there will be. Um, <clears throat> next show is from CHA Live at 11 a.m. Pacific Time. You're going to get a good look at the Prima booth. Um, Alina from Charity Wings is going to be doing a fun project with you. So that's Live with Prima Tuesday, this coming Tuesday at 11 a.m. Okay? So... <clears throat> awesome. All right. Good. All right. So we're in working order here. Give me a shout out if you can hear me or see me. Girls are quiet. So, so quiet. Hi, Pam. All right. Hi, Lisa. It's great to have you guys all here. Okay. So I have a lot of ground to cover tonight. I want to share with you some of the products from the collection and some of the new fin stencils. So I'm going to get started. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to start off with uh, Rusty Keys. This is the border that I worked on with. I'm going to scroll down. Okay, great. Thank you, Pam. It's always nice to know that I'm being heard. <laughs> okay, so first off, I'm going to be using Rusty Keys Ingle Balm Chalk Edger around the edge with a stamp. And that number is 891107. I'm going to be using um, lines, and that is 570514. This is from a couple collections ago. I love this. You can do some faux stitching on it. Really fun. Hi, Candy. Welcome. Okay, so we have a fun paper pad. I have the paper pad. Uh, I can't actually recall if they're single sheets, but you're going to see these and want the whole collection. These colors are so pretty, very vintage. I'm just going to scroll through them real quick. This, this white is blinding. And you're going to have the nice mat on the back. Yeah. My desk is so small, it feels like. I love these patterns. They kind of remind me of a Lifetime collection from a couple years back. I'm going to be using this one this evening. It's very pink. There's some browns. Love this little one right here. Love that. It's so pretty. Yes, thank you. Robbie is going to be moderating for us tonight um, because Carrie's at CHA. Thank you, Robbie. Okay, I love this one with the lines with the paint splatters. It's so cute. And it's really screechy. There's lots of natural textures. Almost looks like um, stone wall or um, just a lot of textures you would see out in nature or architecture. So beautiful. And there's a wide variety of colors involved. So you're going to get a little bit of both. Fun world. Lots of texture on the paper. And this one's pretty. This reminds me of something Finn would do. <clears throat> and you're going to get three of each design, it looks like. This one's very um, charcoal-y. Very pretty. charcoal -y. I don't even know if that's a word. Who knows? Anyways, so that is the paper pad, and it's 847. 364. Um, I'm going to be doing the ripped fishnet. Okay, this is a fin stencil. It is not your average 12 by 12 or 6 by 6. Um, it's 962340. 
I do have a couple of the other fin stencils to show you. I know this is a basket weave and it is 962-289. That one's pretty. It's very different. <clears throat> very thin. And this one is 962-302. And that one is Mechanica. We have scissors and <clears throat> That is 962-258. And we got this fun little checkerboard. And it's 962-319. And that is called Grungy and Grid. Almost looks like a crossword puzzle. Okay. All right. So set that aside. I want I know that Delena did go over some of these embellishments with you, but I'm gonna go over them again. Um, <clears throat> these are all from the Timeless Memories collection. Again, you're going to get lots of metals with it, and it's going to be <clears throat> really fun. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, so this is Memoir. It's 579807, and we're going to be using this cute little bow. We're going to be using this frame tonight, and this is Recollection 579821. Okay, um, we are going to be using, uh, let me go over, actually, where are my other ones? I'm just going to go over all the other embellishments. I'm not going to be using these tonight, but I wanted to share them with you. These are some of my favorite items from CHA, these Sade and Crystals. Um, I don't know if you've seen the variety. They're not all the same um, this time around. You're going to get a different kinds. I know that... Um, <clears throat> I think Bedtime Story has stars, and uh, the Jody Lee Collection one has uh, these cute little roses. These are from the Timeless Collection. They're iridescent. They almost look like fish scales. I don't want to, that's the best I can think of as far as that is concerned. But they are so pretty. You get a wide variety of colors 579401. And next, you're going to get lots of these little um, trinkets. And there's three different kinds. You're going to get the alphabets and the numbers with the little medallion things. Um, I can see myself using these for maybe an album on the outside, like little tassels hanging down. I just finished my December Daily album, and I hope to share it on my blog at some point, but I'm thinking maybe a 2-5 on the outside would be really cute with that. Okay, so just spewing these numbers off. 579-845 for these. So cute. 579-883 for the numbers. You get such a wide variety and you get two of these. I'm sorry, is there two of them? I can't tell. There's two of them in there, okay? And you get three of these in this pack and it's 579-869 and this is Reminisce Alphas, okay? So those are some of the Timeless Memories collection and a fan favorite are the Color Bloom sprays and I really do love the color that they came out with. I did not use this for this layout um, but I thought it was worth mentioning. It is deep teal. So pretty. It is 580322 and I'm going to just spray it on here so you can kind of get an idea of a color. <clears throat> it's definitely worth sharing. Okay. Ugh, it's uh, of course it's going to leak all over me. It was undone. That's the second time this has happened to me today, that something was like unscrewed and it just like started coming off. Leave it to me. Okay, so you see what color it is here on this paper. It's a little hard to see. Um, but once it dries, you're going to get a more accurate color. It's definitely really vibrant, very beautiful. It looks like a hunter green now, right now. But once it dries, it's going to turn into a deep teal. Okay? So pretty. Okay? Alright, of course it leaked all over me. It's top. Alright. I'm going to set that aside. Alright, I got to rush through these. 
so I get enough time. 3D glass gel, 961, 381. We're going to be doing a <laughs> background with those. Uh, new micro beads in blush. These are by Finn, 962, 593. Again, that's blush. They, it is just what it says. It's like a, a light pink. So pretty. Um, color bloom sprays. I used a lot of the press petal for my CHA projects this time around. That is 573-881. Gilded is 573-911. Uh, this is Antique Gold, 573-843. <clears throat> and one of my favorites is Cotton Candy, which is... Blah, blah, blah. Uh, 573737. Okay? Alright. So. Alright. And Velado. <coughs> I know I use these a lot, but I do go back to them because I, I gravitate to them because they are cute, they're fabric, and they are so vibrant in color. There's lots of shimmer on them too. I'm going to be using the orange ones, 578633. And I got two of the Valentina. I'm going to be using the white ones on those. That's why I have two. You have a nice, cute little pink one on the bottom there <coughs> as well. Uh, Neptune leaves. Oops. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I've, I'm just noticing now that I need the peony and I have the cotton candy. I'm not sure why. Um, so I'm going to run back eventually and get the peony. It's 573904. I don't know why I pulled the pot cotton candy. Anyways, so we got the uh, Neptune, which is 577780. The seashell um, flowers, which are <clears throat> um, 577766. And an old favorite of mine is the Bel Canto. I love these. So pretty. The pink, very dark pink, uh, 562137. And they are going to look really beautiful on our layout um, just because. So I'm going to grab my baby, baby girl photo and do this. So to start, what I'm going to do is I'm going to coat my whole background in this clear gesso. And the reason I'm doing that is I don't want any of my sprays um, to say, um, soak into the background because it really kind of dulls it. They become, they don't just, I want them to stick to the surface. There's lots of tooth in this gesso and it really just helps it stay on the surface and not move around a whole lot and sink, sink in. Okay? You don't have to have a ton of it. Alright. So I'm just going the whole way to the border because I, I mostly, or as of lately, this has become a staple in my crafting um, routine. I just go the whole way to the edges now because I never know where I'm going to miss and spray and I just want to make sure I have all my bases covered okay so if you're just joining in I just uh, clear gessoed the whole background okay so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this uh, fishnet and I'm going to tell you why I use the fishnet uh, my photo I don't know if you can see it, but my mother-in-law, when my baby girl was born uh, three years ago, she, my mother-in-law knit this beautiful blanket, and it, it does look like the pe color peony, um, color bloom spray. And I thought that this fishnet looked like the knitting um, in the background. So I thought that they would complement each other well. So that's why I chose this. I always kind of have a plan in mind when I'm doing such things. So, so I'm going to take my 3D gloss gel and you're going to want to add a really thick coat, okay? 
reason why you're going to add a thick coat is because we really want these microbeads to stay put. Okay? Just trying to get my all my little eggs in a row here. Make sure I have everything out of the way. Okay. So, I'm going to take this fishnet stencil and I... I don't. Ha I wish I had my layout, but it's obviously at CHA, so I am going off of what I know, and I do have a picture up. Um, I always usually gravitate and start from the top and m m work my way down, and it's just going to be easier for me that way to just kind of go with it. Okay. So I do have much more. Um, background treatment up here and and less down here uh, so and there's some over here in this corner and I'm really not going to be too particular it is going to look kind of messy and I am going to overlap the stencil a little bit and that's okay because it's all good so I'm just adding a nice thick coat. You can always go back in. Okay, look at that. And I'm just going to add a little bit down here, some over here. Okay. Now. I know that some of you freak out, but I am just going to set my stencil aside. I am one of those gals that just kind of does not want to leave my crafting space to go clean off a stencil. <laughs> I know that that makes some piece people gasp, but I'm just, when I'm in, I'm focused, I just want to keep going. So here's my game plan for tonight with the mediums. I am going to do all the mediums and then dry. Uh, typically, I would suggest doing one at a time, doing the microbeads, fully drying it, and then going back in with the color bloom. Um, <clears throat> but the color bloom should stay stick to the top of this tonight, so I'm just going to let it go. So I'm just adding my blush microbeads, and as you can see, it is so vibrant, so pretty. It goes really well with the peony color bloom and it does go so well with that knitted blanket my mother-in-law made and that's why I chose this color okay so my whole thing is done but wonderful thing about this is that it should all and you know, you guys know a couple weeks ago I had a terrible time with this silly thing that I got at Michael's and the microbeads are much more <laughs> manageable. <laughs> uh. So I am actually going to go over it again. Just really add a thick coat. And I'm really not going to pay too much attention to where all of my cluster is going to be because it's going to be covered. So I want to use all my product where I really, really need it. If you have enough product and you're just starting out and you're not sure where you want to put stuff, I definitely would definitely, definitely suggest just adding a thick coat everywhere. But since I know where everything was, I'm just going to save my product. Anybody have any questions? All right. So there we go. And it is going to dry clear. And you do want to... I'm, I'm going to try to... I'm going to be a little... I want, I really want these microbeads to stick to this background. So I am taking a clear thing and just going over top lightly. Really push it in so it adheres nicely to this background. I'm not really worried that it's pulling up some of the 
medium up because I'm more concerned that it definitely sinks in and they kind of marry with each other and stay put, okay? That's why you want to add a nice thick coat. And I am going to go over one last time up here. This is a little sparse. And a little bit over here. Okay. And of course there's going to be microbeads all over the place after I'm done, which is going to drive my neurotic self crazy. <laughs> oh yes. Crazy, crazy. All right. And I'm just going to keep layering this baby. And I'm going to use all of it. Or at least most of it. All right. Just really pushing it together. I'm not afraid to get my hands a little dirty to ensure that this, this is going to work. Okay. All right, girls. Done and done. Okay, so I'm going to turn it around and show you real quick. All right, so we have a nice base. It's going so nicely. It's really going to go well with this beautiful photo. I love this photo of my daughter. My sister-in-law is actually a photographer, and she is incredible. I don't tell her enough how much her photography is very inspiring and beautiful. Um, <clears throat> I really cherish this photo. Okay, anybody have any questions? <coughs> okay, let me put up my hair real quick. Actually, real quick, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go grab that peony because I really need it now. Okay, so I grabbed the peony. The peony is 573904, and as you can see, it does go so well. So, let's start misting. Like I said, I would have dried this, but I'm just going to continue on and dry it all at once together. So, I want to, I don't want to cover the whole uh, background with mist. I really want some of this to stay put because um, the mists are going to alter it slightly. So basically these color blooms are just going to accent. I'm really going to give it a good shake. And I also did add some water to give it some movement. Really get it moving around. And I did add some up here, and I'm going to add a little bit over here. And you can um, <clears throat> never have too much luck with just the spritzing thi thing. You know how you can pump it, you know, add the little spritz. So I just take it right out of the bottle and do some dot, 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 dot. Okay, so I'm going in with my Gilded, which is an orange color. I'm really adding a lot of color to this. And again, give it some movement. You can add some water. Give it more of a watercolor and just add a little bit of interest to it. Okay? So as you can see, I really didn't add a whole lot in the middle because it's going to get covered up. Okay? So I'm putting my gilder aside. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to blast this with the heat gun now, okay? I'm real sorry if it's going to take a while. It will be worth it. Hey. 
Welcome. I'm just trying to pump a little bit out. See, and it just goes unruly on me. Okay, so it does dry pretty quickly. I'm going to give it another blast in a couple of minutes. I don't want you to have to watch too long of a stretch of drying because that is very boring, I know. Um, I was going to do a second layout <clears throat> and I just don't have enough micro beads tonight. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to prep my flowers and leaves to put on the background. And pretty much my background is done now, which is exciting because then you can move on to embellishing, um, depending on what your favorite part is. So I'm just taking my flowers and the Valentina and scrunching them up a little bit, getting them ready because I'm going to miss them. First I'm going to make them wet with water because they're going to be a little bit more of a watercolor look to them and I want to get them prepped because I really want these this gilded to kind of move, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'm just spritzing them lightly. And then what I do, I always keep baby wipes on hand, is I just kind of press it here and there if I need more coverage somewhere. Okay, maybe I'll add a little bit more. I don't want to go too wild. The reason I added orange to this layout is to complement my daughter's hair bow. Um, if you look in the layout, there is, she's wearing a bow that is orange. I thought that that would look really nice and just kind of pop something unexpected against this vintage background. I like always adding something unexpected to a back to a layout. Anybody have any questions? So if you're just joining in, we finished up the background. I'm kind of letting it air dry a little bit um, in the meantime while I do some of these uh, flowers. I'm prepping my flowers for embellishing. And to do these Neptune and seashell flowers, let me see how many I have here. I have one, two, three, and they're much bigger. And so I need, I'm going to be using some medium sized ones here. Um, I had a bigger one, but I don't have many of them left. I picked through all the big ones, which is fine. Um, let me go with it. So you can see I've already misted some of them with uh, lime wedge. That's what it was. So I'm going to grab some Neptune leaves. These are so beautiful. You can do so many things with them. You can alter them any color that you want. <coughs> so I have a couple of these maple leaves that I'm going to be using. And just kind of picking through which ones I want. There's one there. There's a couple small ones. Okay. Ah, kind of all folded up, giving me an issue. All right, here we have. Let's just grab a few. All right, here's what I'm going to do with these, and it's really quite simple. So I wanted to add some contrast to the background, and the way I get, got contrast in this particular layout is adding those metals, but also adding some darker colors to the flowers is really going to give a pop okay and complement the the picture the background the paper what you've already done okay it's kind of like shadow like you want to add some shadow to it okay 
So I'm letting these dry. And to get this, okay, so I have my Neptune and Seashell or Rodan Thief collection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this press petal. And this is a little bit of a process. I just squirted some press petal onto my paper. And let me get, let's get this so you can kind of see what's going on. Okay, so I press petal and a little bit of the antique gold. Okay, so I'm kind of like letting them marry a little bit. I may even add a little bit of the gilded. And basically all I'm doing is I'm just patting it in and that's pretty much it, okay? The antique gold, the gold is really gonna pop on this. I already popped the leaf off. I'm really not gonna fuss with them a whole lot. I wanted to get some gold, some purple, and a little bit of orange on there, okay? Give it a lot of interest. Okay, and some people might not prefer this, um, but I really like the effect. I want a little bit more purple than brown. And you just kind of let it pull in there and just pull the color out, okay? I'm getting my hands dirty and kind of moving the color around a little bit. And if this is too intense for you, you can always water it down a little bit or just use one color, but I really love the mixture of the three combined. You can, you can always go on a color wheel and see what complements one another. And I thought that this antique gold, which is a brown, and this beautiful pressed petal, I don't use this enough, and it is so gorgeous. Uh, it is this deep purple, and it's so pretty. Please just trust me and get it. You will not be disappointed. Okay, so I'm just soaking up whatever's left over on this leaf. Okay. Where's my antique gold? And the mists are flying here at the Ford household. Kids are all asleep. It's time to have some fun with some Prima goodies. There we go, where we get, um, let me see if I can find I want to hold this up for you. It's always so hard to see on camera and you get the full effect. Try to get my camera to focus in. See that tri-color? You get some orange and some purple and some little bit of gold in there. So pretty. Okay. All right. Let's do a couple more in case we need a few extra. That one's good. I'm just soaking up the color into my leaves. Let me see if I can get a nice base on this one. Okay? Alright. And if you don't like this tri-color, don't do it. Just go with what you like. Use one color, use three. I wouldn't suggest using more than <laughs> maybe four. Um, you don't want it too intense. Okay. All right, so I'm setting this aside. I'm trying to <clears throat> get everything done. Okay, we have plenty of time. Good. All right, here's what's gonna happen next. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna go back and dry this. And it's okay if it's not completely dry. I'm gonna be really careful not to move it along and upset it so it doesn't smear. I just want to get it a little bit more dry. <clears throat> the reason why you're not seeing the color differences is the lighting's a little bit off. Um, obviously, it's nighttime here and it, it's wet. It is obviously going to be darker while wet. So once it dries, you're really going to see a total difference. Like right here, over here on this edge, up to here is press pedal and then right here you can definitely see the difference that it's you that it's the antique gold okay so I didn't add a whole bit a lot of uh, <clears throat> gilded on that <coughs> I 
Oh, excuse me. So I'm going to let that sit a little bit longer. Again, I'm just kind of taking in a break here and there because I don't want to have too ex much of extended time of drying. I don't want to lose any of you guys. Okay, so all right, I'm going to switch it up a little bit. There was one missing right here that I use, and I am going to use something a little different. Okay, so I have my stamp here. I'm just going to take it to my stamp block, and I've totally forgot to add the number for the stamp block on this, on my uh, <clears throat> list, and I'm so sorry about that. I will look it up, and I actually think it's on my blog. I'm trying to remember if it's on the blog. I know I wrote it down somewhere. <laughs> um, if you go to my blog, bry hyphen and hyphen i at blogspot.com, check and see if it's there. If not, I will post it again tomorrow on Facebook or the blog. But you can just basically Google Prima Stamp Block. I think this is the smaller of the two, and it should come up. It came. It was in last release. So basically right now I'm just doing the stamping around the background and the rusty keys is going to look so pretty because I am going to make all of my metal embellishments look rusty. They don't look totally rusty now, but they will be. And I thought that this would be a nice addition and kind of complement that. So I'm just going around the perimeter of my layout and just doing some stamp st faux stitch work. And really, honestly, there is no right or wrong with these line stamps. I mean, I went, I just did it at an angle here. And I mean, I really don't think it has to be perfect. And you can do like bubble if you wanted, do crazy stuff like this. I really am, I like it just kind of interesting and not perfect. And I know that some of you know this. I'm pretty atypical personality, but when I'm at the when I'm at my desk, I definitely like to stretch myself and do things I wouldn't typically do. Gives me a little bit of freedom. Okay, so I pretty much did the perimeter now. Did some stamp work, and I'll show it to you. Look at all that texture. Is everybody still there? Okay. All right. <coughs> Let me know if you're still there. Just want to make sure we're still in the game. Okay, great. All right. For a split second, my screen froze, and uh, obviously I'm going to panic. <laughs> okay. All right, thanks, Robbie. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. All right, let's finish this up, okay? We got, we have plenty of time. I am just gonna go ahead and lay everything down, okay? Because I'm nervous this thing is gonna break on me. I don't trust you stream at all. <laughs> and I wanna make sure you guys see the ending of this, okay? So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some foam adhesive and add it to the back of my photo. Okay, there's two photos, two identical photos. They are wallet size, okay? So I just like little bits of a smaller look to it. 
so that's why I print them at that size. You can crop your fold 4x6, whatever you want to do. But I like to print them in doubles and just layer. Okay, so the first layer is going to go like this. It'll add a slant. Okay, adding baby girl. Yes, I know Ustream has been a little bit of a curd. Oops, I shouldn't have said that. Kitty, don't tell anybody. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm just adding one layer of adhesive. Gosh, I'm getting hot in here. It has been freezing today here in Pennsylvania, and I'm absolutely frozen, and now I'm like boiling hot. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add my metals over top, right over top of this. And I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. Oh, I didn't set, show this at the beginning. I used the chalkboard paint, and look at that mess. It is golden brown, and the number is 577131. I didn't add this at the beginning on my list. I'm kinda like that, Carrie's probably gonna kill me. <laughs> but I'm just gonna go around this, and I'm going to make it look rusty. And here's how I'm gonna do it. I'm just going to take lightly, go around the perimeter with this brown Prima chalkboard paint. And I'm actually going to do multiple layers. There's one. I'm going to do this little bow, and it already does look slightly rusted. So I'm just going to add a little bit of more. Okay. I'm going to add multiple layers to this. There's one. And then I did not add numbers to these. These are Finn Mechanicals. You can use any of the mechanicals that you want. Um, there are two flowers on my original layout, and I was not able to obtain du duplicates of those. So I am just subbing in some Finn Mechanicals this time. But as you can see in the original, um, on the, I don't know, it's probably halfway down on the left, there's a little round flower like this and top right about three quarters of the way down there's one tucked in and in behind <coughs> so they're really more secondary embellishments so it's not a huge deal that I don't have them okay I'm going to take some of this luminart silk in ginger peach and I'm just going to go over it real lightly it's going to give it some sparkle and <clears throat> I'm just dipping my finger right in and this stuff does stain so you want to make sure if you're going out on a date or anywhere in public that you maybe wear a glove or dab it on with a sponge I, I'm oftentimes sitting in public like in church or something I look down and there's like this red all over my hands and it looks like there's blood <laughs> and then I'm like oh my gosh what, why did I go out in public looking like this? My husband must be so embarrassed. Wow. Yeah. 36 degrees in Florida. Wow. Oh my gosh, that's really low. I would not expect that. So I'm going to wipe my hands real quick. So basically those two um, layers together are going to give you this nice little orange rusty tone. It's not going to be too rusty looking, um, but it's just going to kind of uh, complement everything real nice. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take that, and it's not completely dry, and I'm okay with that. As long as you're real careful, add a nice thin layer of glue to the back of the metal you're going to glue it right to the photo. Okay. And I kind of added it at an angle. I don't like how this, some of this is clumped on. All right. I'm going to add it at an angle. The reason I'm doing that is because I didn't want to cover up her bow. Okay. Okay, and now we're going to add layers around it. So, <clears throat> yeah. I'm going to hold off on this bow until I add one of my flowers. Basically, I'm going to go to big to little. I'm going to start, I always lay down my photo first, where I think I might want it, 
and then I work around, adding big inside and then working my way out to this out to the side with smaller flowers. Okay? Just fluffing a little bit. My flowers are still a little bit wet, but I really don't mind. Um, just because of time's sake, I'm not gonna go crazy trying to dry everything. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Like fluff in the flowers. Fluff, fluff, fluff. Now I'm gonna add some of these. Um, I kind of want the colors to kind of move a little bit more, so I'm going to wet them just a little bit. And maybe if they're too intense for you, you can just take a baby wipe and clean up the excess a little bit. Okay? So I'm just tucking them in here and there, just following along with what I originally did. And there's a flower here. One of these seashell rhodanthe flowers that I misted with tricolor. I really encourage you girls to experiment with these, um, these color bloom sprays and different combinations that you can come up with. They really do <coughs> work with you. Um, you can get any type of white flower uh, I do notice that some, m most, actually all of the um, paper flowers work fine with adding the color bloom. You're going to have to play around with the fabric ones. Some of them take the mist really well and some of them don't. It just kind of depends. Okay. Alright, so I had a bel canto flower here. All right. Like I said, working big and then working out. Okay. Aw, oh, congrats, Lisa. Aw, oh, that's so exciting. Babies are so precious. I've had the baby itch. I won't deny it. <laughs> All right. All right. <clears throat> here we go. Adding some of these bel canto flowers in here and there. I want this one to move a little bit. I'm pulling it up. Gasp. <gasps> She's picking it up and moving it. Ah! okay to do that. I'm trying to get this front and center so you girls can really can get a look at what's going on. Hopefully I'll get good enough at this that I can actually work upside down. Um, I don't, someone, one of the girls does that. I can't remember. <coughs> Maybe it's Jamie. Um, I salute them. All right. We are almost done, girls. Pretty much just embellishing right now just adding tons of beautiful flowers you can add a title anywhere you want I sometimes add titles and sometimes not just depends okay and to do just checking my work and I needed another ah, of course of course Need another one of these seashell ones. And on the fly, I'm just gonna set this aside. I missed it. Or maybe it's hiding from me. I'm just gonna mist it real light. This is another way you can do it. Of course, it's gonna coat it a little bit more, and that's okay, I guess. For time purposes. I just sprayed it directly on. I mean, you're going to get much more full coverage doing it like that. <coughs> and I don't mind it because it's just, it's a secondary flower to me. So I don't mind it being not perfect. 
because it's going to hide under stuff, okay? Next, we're going to go in with the Velado orange ones. And I used one, two, I think I'm going to add three. Okay, I added two on there. And I'm wondering, huh. Oh, what am I doing? Blah, blah, blah. I'm not even paying attention. And I'm pulling off the wrong flowers. I'm going to add an orange flower here. I'm going to add an orange flower over here. And I think I might add an orange flower right here. And I know that's not what I did on the original. That's okay. And I'm tucking these Velados in under. And like I said on the last um, Live with Prima, I like sometimes them not to sit flat, but to kind of sit to the side. Kind of make them look more realistic. Okay. So we did most of the embellishing. I'm going to go in and add the leaves now. <coughs> and we're almost done. Uh, I, wish I, I wish you girls could see this. They're starting to dry now. I don't know if you can tell. Let me get my white paper or something white. <coughs> can you see it now? Can you see it now? Can you see the difference? You're really going to see the color changing. Very fall leaf. <laughs> You girls are funny. I love <laughs> I love reading your comments if I can. Yes, I have been ill. I had the flu and bronchitis last week. Um, and I had my flu shot. And I did not get it as bad as my husband did. But I, the bronchitis actually was what took it out of me uh, in the end. Because I was coughing all night long for four or five nights in a row and it I don't want to say it damaged anything uh, but it definitely has taken a while for my voice to come go back to normal which is unfortunate when you have two little kids running around and causing mischief because you're like stop stop and they're not listening to you because they can't hear what you're saying or they're looking at you like, what are you talking about? I can't understand what you're saying, Mom. So I apologize for the raspy voice. Okay. All right. A couple more leaves. So I'm just filling in with these leaves. And I really like how they are not completely covered with the color bloom spray. And some of the white is peeking out because it's really going to add um, a lot of pop. And I really think that they add so much to this layout these leaves with the white and these uh valentina like there is some white still showing which is also going to complement the uh, neptune leaves oh just be careful it's not the flu because for a long for several days I thought I just had a bad cold and then I finally went to the doctor and she's like yep you have the flu and I'm like what you gotta be joking me I did not expect her to say that at all all right so I'm adding this cute sweet little bow I added that last because there's a couple flowers that are kind of intermingling with it I love this sweet little bow because you have a little bit of vintage and you have a little bit of the shabby chic with this sweet, these sweet little pearls that dangle down. Let's see if I can get them to dangle where I want them to. Okay. All right. And last but not least. We have these metals. Oh, there goes my thing. 
All right. My layout is on my tablet here, sitting on the table. So it kind of just went, for, it kind of went off asleep. But I know what I'm doing here. All right, because I only have a couple things. So again, these are just the replacements for the other timeless memories um, embellishments. And the ones that I did use, I can tell you what they are called. If I can find my paper. Of course I... <clears throat> okay, so I used memoir and recollection and I think the third one that has the two metal flowers is... Um, I'm sorry, two one. It's five seven nine eight one four, which is reflection. That's the one that I do not have. That has the two flowers that come with it. <laughs> okay. And if you really want to add some color, if this is just not um, doing it for you, I would suggest adding a fun little pop of color of something else, something unexpected with this teal, this deep teal, um, the new color bloom spray that actually goes with the Timeless Collection and it's 580322. Okay, so it is pretty much done. Again, you can add a title to it if you want. I mean, there's lots of dimension. And that's it. No, you can never have too many flowers. As my husband can attest, I have flowers hiding in every corner of our bedroom now. Or sprays. I, I know it. <laughs> can have never too many sprays. And uh, Prima is really um, <clears throat> knocking out of the ballpark with these beautiful um, sprays that are going along with the collections to add to the already um, older collection. It kind of has a little bit of everything for you. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? And make sure you go out and try to get some of Finn's stencils. They're so pretty. You can do so much with them. If I oh, I wanted to mention if you don't want to use microbeads, if microbeads annoy you. Um, sometimes microbeads and glitter are just so unruly, they really annoy me, and I try to sometimes avoid them. If you don't want to go that route, you can, another thing you can try is to do the 3D gloss and add, uh, say, a color bloom spray like the peony um, that will give you the same effect. You're going to want to just find the right ratio of gloss gel to the color bloom and that will pretty much give you the same effect. You won't get as much of the texture, but uh, you'll get the same, same just. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Thank you, Darcy. Thank you. You girls are so sweet. Thank you so much for coming. And I know that everybody's sad. Everybody's at CHA. I feel left behind. Uh, all my friends are at CHA having a wonderful time. Um, all the Prima girls are, and guys are at the booth setting up right now. I just talked to Carrie on the phone, and they are busy getting ready. Uh, but busy getting ready to showcase all those gorgeous flowers and embellishments that they came out with. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I'm holding down the fort from home, home base here in Pennsylvania. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much. And don't forget, we are having a Live with Prima on Tuesday in Anaheim from CHA, uh, 11 o'clock in the morning. So it's 11 p.m. Or I'm sorry, 11 p.m. No, don't listen to me. 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, and that would be 2, 2 o'clock <clears throat> here on the East Coast. Okay? Anybody have any questions? Oh, have fun, Darcy. That's going to be so exciting. 
<laughs> Lauren Beckel. <laughs> You're funny. Oh my gosh. Thank you all so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Uh, all right, girls. All right, well, let me pull up my keyboard. And <laughs> if you have any questions, you are more than welcome to reach me on my Facebook page um, or my blog, bri-and-i.blogspot.com. I know it's a lot of words, so I'm actually going to type it. Okay. Brian I dot blogspot dot com or is it at blogspot dot com? Who knows? If <laughs> it's one of those nights. All right, and Adrian Ford coloring my world is the Facebook my Facebook fan fan page. Okay. All right, thank you so much, girls, for coming. Let me know if you have any questions, okay? Nighty-night.